Welcome graduates, families, staff, and special guests. We're about to begin our sacred liturgy of the Mass. Our graduation Mass today is celebrated by Bishop William McGratton, and it's con-celebrated by Pastor John Nemanic of the St. Michael Catholic Community. The first reading today it will be proclaimed by Dr. Brian Zumalis, Chief Superintendent of Calgary Catholic Schools, and our cantor today is Chelsea Marshall, accompanied on piano by Amy Parischuk. We're so pleased that you're able to join us today. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. I extend a warm welcome to all of the graduates from the Calgary Catholic High School District, and also to their family members and all their friends who are joining in this live stream mass to mark the end of their high school years and the beginning of a new stage in their lives. We're celebrating this Mass here at St. Michael's Parish Community, and I'm very grateful to have Father John Nemanic, the pastor, to be with me to celebrate this most joyous occasion. When we gather to celebrate our faith, we recognize that Christ's presence is always here in our midst. And so with that recognition, let us first, though, acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary Ever-Virgin all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, the Father of every gift, we confess that all we have and are comes down from you. Teach us to recognize the effects of your boundless care and to love you with a sincere heart and with all our strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. And now, bless the God of all, who everywheres, everywheres works great wonders, who fosters our growth from birth and deals with us accordingly to his mercy. May we give us gladness of heart and may there be peace in our days in Israel as in the days of old. May he entrust to us his mercy and may he deliver us in our days. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, 
that it, you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I've called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I've heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I'm giving these commandments to you so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, first of all, let me begin by extending my best wishes and my congratulations to the graduates of Calgary Catholic High Schools. This is a celebration for you, for your family members and friends. Yes, it is being provided virtually, but that should not take away from the importance of what we are gathering to celebrate and to recognize that for the last number of years, you have, through your educational experience, been living and learning in our Catholic faith. This is the very mission statement of Calgary Catholic, to live and to learn in the gift of our Catholic faith. Now, this experience of living right now is obviously something that is being challenged. The living of society, the living of families, and even the living of schools has, in this time of pandemic, been a challenge. And not necessarily a negative challenge, but I would propose to you a challenge that has caused a deeper sense of questioning. And it is an opportunity, I think, to learn, to discover what is most important in life. And so I'm sure that all of you, as I have, come to understand that God made us to be very social. We enjoy being in the presence of others. And we've also created places and spaces so that people can come and gather. We call them homes. We call them schools. We call them churches. They are places of encounter, as Pope Francis would say, opportunities for us to not only experience one another, but to experience the very presence of God. For we who believe in God, we who understand that mystery of faith, that we are in the presence of God every moment of our lives. But for a Catholic school, there is another encounter, another person that takes premacy, and that is the person of Christ. And so, like a parish, a home, a school is a place in which we can encounter Christ. The very coming together, the coming to experience the life of one another, also provides us with the opportunity to experience Christ. For he told us in the scriptures, where two or three are gathered, I am there in your midst. And he is here present. And he is present virtually through the gift of technology, for the Spirit is much more powerful than the Internet. The Spirit connects us, and the Spirit allows us to experience what is most important in life. In a school, it is a community, but every community is an opportunity for us to share our lives to recognize that friendships, 
people who are significant, teachers, staff. There are people that come into our lives that touch us in ways that only God has predestined. We call them relationships and we call them friendships. And I hope that many of you have been given that opportunity and gift to be touched by the lives of your fellow classmates, that you have experienced this deep gift of friendship and the experience. Just last week, I had a virtual meeting with some of the student leaders of Calgary Catholic, and they mentioned to me the challenge that this COVID pandemic has also provided for you as young people, that you have begun to experience the importance of friendship. Even though you can text one another, the very fact that you come into the school, you go through the halls of a class, you sit beside one another. You might not have said much to each other, but these are moments of encounter and friendship. These are what places of encounter like a school provide us. But they are also a place of learning. And this is where the imparting of knowledge, the effort that you have made to learn, some of you being very diligent, and myself, as I've often said in humility, I didn't really apply myself in high school until my last year but I'm not suggesting that as advice for you in the future, for it's important to take every opportunity to learn, to recognize that knowledge and wisdom can be imparted, and to take the opportunities when they arise. But there is a deeper learning that we call wisdom. It's more penetrating. It's very deep. And it's what we hear in that first reading from the book of Sirach. It also was talked about as the book of wisdom. And this is where we see the learning and the knowledge that is imparted through Scripture, the revealed Word of God. For the author of Sirach tells us, it is everywhere that God works His wonders, both in nature, but also in our society and in our world and history. But it is God who touches our lives, for the author says that He is the author of our growth from our very birth, to know that God has given us the gift of life, that He is the author of what we have come to experience even in these short period of years that you've come now to be a teenager. And it is He that the author says, gives us the gladness of our hearts, and he entrusts to each of us the profound gift of his mercy. You see, to learn these messages is to know and to believe in the very presence of God. Yes, even in the midst of a pandemic, many people are recognizing at a deeper level that God's presence is calling us to recognize the very gift of human life, for it is being taken away tragically from the elderly and sometimes from the young. But in the midst of this pandemic, we should have a deeper reverence for every human life, even those who are struggling. And that, I hope, is the wisdom that you as Catholic students can take with you. In our gospel, Jesus begins once again to teach his disciples, and he's teaching them a very profound lesson. What is the origin of love? He goes on to say that the love that he has shown his disciples is the very love that he has received from his Father. You see, when we come to believe in Jesus Christ, we are in touch with the source of love. For it is God who bestowed upon His Son this infinite example of the Father's tender mercy and forgiveness. 
For in the very life of Christ, he shows forth humanly the love that God wants us to express to one another. He goes on to tell his disciples that if you want to remain in this love, you must keep my Father's commandments. What he's saying is you must keep the wisdom of my Father. The Ten Commandments are not to be seen as burdensome, but an invitation for us to discover the very wisdom of God, the very love of God. And so the commandments must become that word, a source of guidance for Christians and for people of goodwill. And so we remain in God's love when we recognize and accept that this guidance can provide for us and for others a true source of love, a true source of reverence. But he goes on to also allow us to understand that this origin of love has also become human. And this is the mystery of Christ, who takes on the love of the Father, and he says to us that if you follow me as an example, and you lay down your life for your friends, you will experience spiritually a profound and overpowering presence of love. And I challenge all of you, for when you have not thought first about yourself but others, where you have taken on a certain act of service or suffering for another, when you have come to realize that that was motivated by a deep love, then you are walking and following in the example of Christ. For he wants us to be his friends and not his servants. And this can become for those who follow Christ, recognizing that he is the source of life, that we find in Christ a friendship. And this becomes the profound experience that can be discovered within our Catholic school system, that the love that is shared daily is a friendship that all of us have with Christ. And Christ wants us to experience this friendship. He wants us to understand that God desires this friendship and this love from us. And we all know that perfect love is never demanding. It's simply an invitation for us in freedom to respond in the same way. And so I hope that you and your opportunity of celebrating opportunities of faith in the school, activities of service, of simply being involved in the act and the desire to be one with one another, you have found this friendship in Christ. And you can hopefully have had the experience of making these friendships which will last a lifetime. Myself, in the last two weeks, I received an email from a friend in high school who lives in Edmonton. And he began it by saying, I apologize for not welcoming you to Alberta three years ago, but I wanted to reach out to you because we were friends in high school. But he didn't reach out to me for himself. He reached out for another classmate that I also knew. And he said that he's struggling with fourth stage cancer. And he said to me he would simply love to receive an email to know that he has a bishop praying for him. And so, as we're apt to do when we ask, have these requests, I simply sent off the email to his wife and to him and said that I would continue and to place them at the top of my prayers each day. You might not think that that's a great sacrificial act, but it is an act in which we commit ourselves in prayer to support those who are struggling. And how many times have you had that request, being in a Catholic school, to respond to the needs of those who have been suffering? Maybe your classmates who have lost parents, or maybe some of your own classmates who are struggling because of many issues that they face. And they simply ask in faith to offer prayers for them. You see, 
The gift of Catholic education is not only about making friendships, but allowing that friendship to be rooted in Christ and to respond to such requests and know that it is a way in which we are drawn into the friendship of Christ. I've kept many friends from high school, but there are a few that are always present with me even today. Friends that I recognize were to be placed there by God because they helped me in my own journey of faith. I've kept friends with those who I studied with in chemistry, I played with on the sports fields, and all of them have been in some way instrumental in the gift and the friendship that I've continued to have with God and Christ. And so I challenge you, the graduates, to think back over the friends that you've made and to recognize that maybe in the future you will see them as ways in which God was showing His love to you, showing His love in the humanity of Christ. And so I encourage you to keep these friendships and to know that many of them have been given to you by God. But as you come to this time of graduation, <clears throat> it is a moment in history. It is a time in which it marks the end of a certain period of learning. It also allows you to recognize the accomplishments that you've made, but you will also have to let go of certain friendships. For many of you will be called in various vocations to take different paths in life. And so there is a letting go, but you should not let go of the friendships that you've made and the friendships that have been established because of Christ. Pope Francis, in his most recent encyclical, Christus Vivit, had wonderful passages of reflection about young people, both the joys, the accomplishments, and the struggles that young people go through. But he had one particular chapter in which he said that young people need roots and not to let yourselves be uprooted. For you can be uprooted by society, by messages of the world, but don't become uprooted from your own families, from your history and your culture, and especially the gift of faith that you have experienced in being part of a Catholic school system. When you leave Catholic schools, you will go on to universities, to colleges, and to work, but what you need to take with you is the friendship that Christ has bestowed upon you. And there are four messages that I leave with you that Pope Francis says is the kerygma, the good news that each young person should live and know in their lives. And they are very simple. The kerygma of the good news that you must take forth into the world is this. God is love and he desires that love to be given to you. It is Christ who came to save us in that love and that Christ is alive today and you can know him as your friend. And it is truly the Holy Spirit that gives love and life to that friendship. May you always remember this kerygma. God is love. Christ came to save us. He is alive with you today, and it is the Spirit that will give you life. Trusting once again in God's love, 
We turn to him now and we offer to him our prayers and petitions. For those who lead the church, that their example may be a sign of God's unlimited love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people of every nation, that they may seek peaceful justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders and medical workers, that they may experience protection and resilience, and that researchers may be gifted with wisdom and insight, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may experience God's healing and be restored to health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholic education, that it may continue to foster increased trust in God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For staff, students, and families, that they may be in constant prayer and grow in faithfulness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For graduates, that they may bear the lasting fruit of God's kingdom in the world as they embark on the next part of their journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather in faith for the celebration, that they may fulfill Christ's command to love one another as Christ has loved us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, that they may abide forever in Christ's love and know the joy of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you strengthen us each and every day through the gift and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We ask this gift to come upon all of the graduates of Calgary Catholic High Schools as they celebrate this Mass together. And we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the this sacrifice, sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, name for our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, and under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right <coughs> and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Michael, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you from their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously granted peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who has given us this spiritual food, this saving sacrament of your Son, which we have offered you in thanksgiving, grant that being strengthened by the gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devotedly and be worthy still of further blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I invite the graduates who are participating to bow your heads and to pray in your hearts for the blessings that are being bestowed upon you through this solemn blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out on you his saving wisdom. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn his steps towards you and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you this day and in the future in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let's